<sighs> Hi, Leaf Reed here. Today is a special video because I'm covering a book that actually got me into reading very advanced novels, really the, the genesis of my um, literature interest. And it, it's odd because it might not be the book you expect and it might not be the book I expected. And to this day, I'm still puzzled by it. And it is Ulysses by James Joyce. Um, I'll just say it out loud. I hate this book. I read all of it. And I hate it. I don't know what came over me. I just left high school, I believe, when I was starting university. And something came over me. It was the strangest event where I said I wanted to read the most, uh, the hardest, most nuanced, most whatever piece of literature. I wanted to, uh, I don't know, do the most extreme form of reading. Uh, I, I, I had never really liked reading in high school and I thought, you know, if I really challenge myself, Maybe I'll find something worthwhile. And Ulysses was just kind of this book that was just there. And I hadn't really even heard about it a lot before. But I just thought, I'm going to read this. And I'm going to prove that I can do it. And what my revelation was is that one of the most highly praised books of all time is just awful. It just... It just sucks. I like, here's the thing, right? I understand what he's trying to do. And I appreciate in the style of his writing and the way he's doing it. And the entire uh, point of James Joyce's writing is that um, he writes in stream of consciousness. So he doesn't write as if it's a narrator. He doesn't write as if it's a, um, the actions of a person. He writes as if the way the person would think. And for each character, there's a different way that they think and the different way that they perceive things. But most of it is basically just gibberish. This isn't something you're supposed to read and go like, oh, that was nice. You're supposed to be like, and be like, oh, yes. Well, in this part, he employed this because of this character. It's like you have to do a analysis on it. And it's just, I hate this book. I hate it so much. And because I hated it so much, it drove me to read other things that I also were just considered out of my reading uh, vocabulary or skill level. I, I just read something so difficult and it's something I hated so much that I thought, well, I can read anything now. And that kind of set me off on my journey to read the classics or whatever I thought was improbable or impossible. Because I said, if I can read, I basically, if I can read this, I can read anything. Let me just give you a little sample here. The voice of warning, solemn warning, told them the youth had entered a lonely hall, told them how solemn fell his footsteps there, told them the gloomy chamber, the vestige priest sitting to strive. Decent soul, bet addled now, but he'll win in answers. Poet's picture puzzle, we hand you Chris five pound note, 
bird sitting, hatching in a nest. Lay of the last minstrel he thought it was. See blank T, what domestic animal? T dash, our most courageous mariner. Good voice he has still. No eunuch yet with all his belongings. Listen, Bloom listened. Richie Golding listened. And by the door, deaf Pat, bald Pat, tip Pat listened. The chord harped slower. So it's, it's, it's like, hey, what if we wrote as if people thought? Like, this is their kind of their thought process. And it's like, yeah, that's really cool. It doesn't really make a good novel or a good story, though. Um, so there are actually characters. And what, what the story is actually about, if you can argue such a thing, is there is Leopold Bloom and um, I don't remember his name. But um, it's these two, I guess, um, literary professors who live in Dublin and they just live their lives. And apparently the, the history of this book is that um, there's a part in here where it describes a man masturbating. And I guess I just never got that because I had no idea what the hell was going on. But because there was a part in here describing such a scene, it was banned in the United States in the mid or whatever 1920s. And it didn't enter circulation again until the 1960s. And so it was kind of like after the era of prohibition and a bunch of um, other stuff, uh, they kind of thought, oh, well, it's such a great piece of literature, we'll, we'll resurface it. And so because of its rarity, it became a a collector's item or a rare book and people kind of looked up to it for a while but it's just what is the age of the soul of a man as she hath the virtue of the chameleon to change her hue at every new approach to be gay with the merry and mournful with downcast she too is her age changeable in her mood no longer is leopold he sits there, ruminating, chewing the cud of reminiscence, that staid agent of publicity and holder of modest substance in the funds. A score of years are blown away. He is young, e. Leopold. The only line I ever remember from this is I think they were out getting drunk at a pub, and it was something like, his the top of his eyebrows or his eye skin thing caught the tip of a building and pulled them down all the way to the floor or something it was some crazy passage and that's the only thing i remember about this book uh why is it called ulysses and ulysses is the um the roman name for odysseus the um the hero of the Odyssey. I can't tell you. I have no idea. Because you were lost on an ocean of worthless garbage. Oh yeah, sometimes they just speak in French for, for no reason. Bloom, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. There's The two men are Bloom and Leopold. Bloom bent Leopold ear, turning a fringe of doily down under the vase. Yet yeah, order. Yes, I remember. Lovely air. In sleep she went to him. Innocence in the moon. Brave. Don't know their danger. Still hold her back. Call name. Touch water. Jingle jaunty. Too late. She longed to go. That's why. Woman, as easy stop the sea. Yes, all is lost. A beautiful air, said Bloom. Lost Leopold. I know it well. Never in all his life had Richie Golding. He knows it well, too or he feels, still harping on his daughter, wise child that knows her father, Daedalus said, me. I don't know how I read this. I don't know how I read all of it, but I did somehow, and it definitely made me a little crazy. Anyway, that is Ulysses. Do I recommend this book? Absolutely not. I, if I could erase this book from all of human history, like 1984, I would. It would just, just buy.
Goodbye. Go gone. You're gone. Goodbye. Um, it is, it's something else. Anyway, um, it's interesting to look at what, where people start, but where I started was with something that I just hated so much and spread so much light out of the darkness of doubt of what I could read that I ended up reading everything. But in any case, do not read this ever. You can open up a couple pages and be like, yep, I'm not doing that and not be like me and actually read the whole thing. And as always, guys, please keep reading something else. Bye.